My name is Adi, and just like you, I am here on this beautiful planet supporting a really magical, remarkable, unique process of what we call planetary ascension. And we are succeeding, and our reality is really changing every day because of what we are doing, how we are changing our consciousness, but mainly because of our divine self that we can also call the I am presence within us that is making our DNA a little bit more multidimensional once again and allowing us to remember. What we are remembering to me is pretty crazy. It's like science fiction in the cosmos, <laughs> but we have to be super open-minded and maybe there is no limit to anything anymore and anything is possible. And I, I think that's pretty much the goal of creation. The goal of creation is to create multitude of universes within which we have multitude of worlds and we have zillions of galaxies with, you know, we can't even count how many worlds and how many beings. And so what is the point of it all? <laughs> I think that's a really good question. So the point of it all is a very simple kind of process, and it is a process of expansion. And because we cannot expand as a being without experience, we must create what we call dream worlds, within which we can have multitude of experiences. And only then we get to know ourselves and we get to grow. If we did not have the opportunity for an experience, we would never get to know who we are. And we could not actually up level. We could not grow. And so what is the truth? The truth is that all worlds are dreams within which we too are dreaming, but it is necessary. And if we all could really fully wake up and say, oh yeah, I know I'm dreaming, this is a dream, we would not take it seriously. And so then we would not really play wholeheartedly. So the purpose behind the game, it's a really good uh, design really. When you believe that this matters, then you can pour your heart into it and your soul and do it really well if you choose to. But if you thought, well, this is totally illusion <laughs> and it's just made of particles and it's all energy and it's just a dream, then you might not want to show up for it. So we are showing up for something really amazing. On a personal level, as you know, we're going through a very big process of integration, but also dissolving. This is the time, which is a cosmic cycle and a galactic cycle, solar cycle, within which we have the opportunity as humanity, whatever that means, to really wake up from the dream, but to also still want to keep playing the game of life. So we've always heard Divine Mother say that we live in a dream within a dream. And so we are just waking up from that dream that got stuck so that we can liberate the being to really play another dream, which is a little bit different. So the original intent be behind the dream, which was the rainbow light would create us and we would be these beings with rainbow bodies that would be created through source light, but also planetary light. We would be super sustained and we would go into a material world where energy kind of slows down. So it looks like matter. And we would be able to bring our rainbow light into a world like this. And we would do it through the two aspects that we would be. And that would be our divine self, this amazing kind of reflection of what we would call God, the divine, with the 12 rainbow colors. And we would merge it with this physical kind of elemental being, the body deva. And together they would be having a really great time, coming up with some new ideas, expanding the dream. So that is the dream. When you look at the entire cosmos, which is, which consists of multiverses, then within the cosmos, you actually, if you could see it from the outside, if that's even possible, it's only possible through consciousness at this point and through a very expanded consciousness, then you can see that the entire cosmos is just one mind. 
And within the one mind, we all exist and we all participate in creating information, exchanging information. So in a way, you and me are creating those experiences and a multitude of experiences to really fulfill the purpose of creation. You can call it spirit, whatever names we have for it. The idea is to never ever stop creating and at the same time to also have detachment from it. So the awakened master realizes how everything works. And even though they might say, I want to check out, I don't want to be part of it anymore because I realize it's all just a dream. The awakened master actually has much more fun creating them. And that's why we have beings who figured it out and they just laugh and laugh and laugh no matter what in the face of everything. And they are untouched by it. And yet they have their whole heart and soul in it because they know they are assisting the creator to expand creation. So I hope that makes sense. So the last few days, we have been shown that there are many different futures, many different timelines that people call it these days. And that in a way, it is hard to tell if we actually are in the present moment or if we are in the past or if we are in the future. So I can offer the perspective where I actually did travel thanks to the work that we have been doing with our divine self, really connecting deeper and deeper into the divinity that we are, which I think is the most important work we can do to fully and 100% embody the prototype that we call Hercules. So in cosmic terms, this prototype is called Hercules. And Hercules is a being that is created through the 12 aspects of the divine. That's why in our mythology, we say Hercules had 12 labors. But in a way, it's bringing the energy of what we would call God into a being that will be so divine and yet will have a physical embodiment through the body deva. And so when we work with this aspect and we become it, we really become our highest potential. We were designed originally to become that, to really become uh, Hercules. And that is that we get rid of what some call the ego, others call it the personality self, slave self, whatever that is. But it's the fragment that kind of was holding the illusion within itself. Now, when we fully give permission to this divine self that we really actually are to fully download its consciousness into us, we start awakening to our superpowers, which we all have. So I highly recommend to everyone to every day download 100% of your divine consciousness and just surrender completely that which does not resonate anymore with this amazing, absolutely unlimited uh, power, which is so mighty. It's the power of our own divinity. So that's what we are embodying here. So with these amazing gifts that are being given to us, fully and completely for our use now outside of the ego self we can actually awaken so much more faster and receive this unlimited kind of view of things so with that our well this was our work that we have done so i was able to travel into the future on many different timelines to see the future of humankind and it also already seemed like the future happened so this is the nature of time that when you travel along a timeline, it is a timeline that already exists and it seems pretty real. So I went into the future and several of them where humanity got to a point where they started to destroy themselves and also destroyed the earth. And all these timelines actually had something in common. Every one of them was showing me that humankind disconnected from nature for many different reasons. So let's say one of them is humans started to more rely on robotics and they wanted to become more kind of uniform and have all the perfection that um, like virtual reality can have. And eventually that led, led to a point where humans just became completely soulless and they also disconnected so much from nature, they no longer had any reverence for the earth and they just destroyed her through all sorts of conflicts. So that was just one timeline. There was another timeline, again, super similar, just again, humans disconnecting from nature, being so technological, thinking that technology is the advancement. And yet it was not technology that was created to be based in love. It was not technology that was actually mimicking nature. And again, humans end up destroying themselves and the world. 
There was another timeline <laughs> where again, humans <clears throat> pay more attention to the online world and get pleasure from it. Uh, that normally should come from the physical existence. And again, humans eventually go down that rabbit hole and then they destroy themselves in the earth. So then there was that one timeline which led to absolute magic. And it led to what we would call this utopia where all beings are thriving, there is peace on earth, we are collaborating, everyone is in love with life, Everybody's just co-creating more and more beauty and perfection. And what that timeline was, was the timeline where humanity actually observes nature, learns from nature, is fully connected to nature, has reverence for the earth and nature. And it was just the path of mother nature. Now that would not surprise you. And so I, tra I tra <laughs> try to travel back to now And my divine self told me, well, you're traveling into the past. You know that you are now in the past. This is the past. And you and me were sent in a way to the past so that we can change certain things so that we choose the right timeline for the earth and humanity. Now, total science fiction, but this is what we are doing. We are here getting rid of these inorganic timelines that were what we call artificial intelligence timelines and we are choosing the timeline of the earth of mother nature of divine mother we are choosing a timeline of awakening to consciousness compassion and love and this should be really easy for you and me right because we can very easily explain this to others it's not about choosing god it's it's really choosing something so simple so present, so understandable that everyone can relate to. We are choosing nature. We are choosing our true nature. And we are choosing also the embodiment. That means we are waking up from the illusion that the body was a sinner and whatever useless and we could just do whatever we wanted to it and just leave it behind and actually see it as a vehicle, a temple, a being that is embodying the divine. And so some teachings told us in the past already, the body is a temple for the divine. And so it is, it is a temple. It really is a being on its own. And even though we got used to the idea that when we die, the body dies and we move on, that was not the original blueprint and that is not our highest potential. The highest potential is that obviously we right now you know we don't even know what that would look like but the way that it works on these higher timelines is that the body is always nourished through life force it is in perfect harmony it does not deteriorate and yet we are able to change form whenever we need to and so we might be like let's say thousand years in the same body working on some project because why not And then when we are ready and finish this cosmic project, we just kind of change form without any disease, without any what we would call dying. It's just a kind of quantum leap into a new form. So right now, what is the most important thing that we do? The most important thing I believe is connecting with our divine self, but also bringing the divine into the temple of the physical and allowing the physical to transmute all these um, kind of, I don't want to call them imperfections, but definitely where we had these distortions and choose the right timeline with everything that we do. Divine Mother being the cosmos herself, the manifested nature, also, you know, like nature is the highest intelligence. And even if we want to create some technology, it can never really be truly intelligent until it mimics nature. And that means it mimics love. It is based in love and it is serving love. And so if you see Divine Mother, the Cosmic Mother Nature as the entire cosmos, then we must understand that she is absolutely intelligent because all nature is intelligent. Now, if we trust her intelligence, then we know that just like in this world, we have seasons. She too has seasons. You know, our Earth obviously is part of her. 
And so here in this world, we don't worry about when the spring comes, we allow the spring to come. And so with the cosmic mother nature, if we can surrender to her, there is really not much else we need to do. Surrender is an expression of love. And when we express our trust as love and surrender to that nature, she will move through us and inspire us. Now, what she told me is really interesting. Um, you know, she spoke about how every single action that we actually take, every word we say, every whatever we do in this reality has a consequence. And you would think of it as karma or dharma. But actually, the way she explains it is that because we are within the mind of God, then everything we do leads to the next thing. And so there is a sequence. Now, sometimes the sequence <laughs> seems in sequential, <laughs> consequential. And that is, let's say, your, your heart is the one who should be making the decisions. So your heart tells you to go outside and, I don't know, feed the squirrels. And if you do not listen to what the heart is saying, then you are not following the ideal sequence for your life. So the sequence does matter. What do you do when and do you do it? And so listening to the heart where we have the divine self and then doing what the heart is advising us to do as the next logical sequence step in our life is really important. And she told, she told us yesterday that it is like playing chess, that there are moves and movements, I guess, that are really important because they are the best way and they are the victorious way. And so may we listen to this divine self within us and hear what she wants us to do. And even though it might seem like small little things, they will lead to greater things. So in a way, we are mimicking nature. It is like water. We go from the spring where the spring is small and we turn into a stream, from the stream into the river, from river to the sea, from sea to the ocean. So that's how the steps actually kind of add up and bring us to the ocean, which is really what the mystics call God. <laughs>